Welcome to this special web edition of A Look at Finance. Joining me as always, Jenny Montgomery Scott's Stephen Carlton, first vice president for Jenny Montgomery Scott. And joining us today is Dr. Steve Wood. He is the chief market strategist for North America for Russell Investments. Now, Steve, thanks for joining us on the show today. It's great to have you here. So a little bit about Steve. It, Steve with, with Russell Investments and he comes from an institutional background. So one of the great things about having him on the show today is getting a little bit broader picture of the global markets and how it affects the local community. You've got the institutional background, you do things on a global perspective. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to London, to Paris not too long from now, and you're going to you know, other parts of the world, but you started off at the right place, Glens Falls, New York, so welcome. Exactly. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the Glens Falls, Saratoga region. We appreciate you uh, stopping by. Lots going on uh, mm -hmm. in the world of finance. Uh, today, the market heading for another record high. We're, of course, over that 14,000 mark for, for the last week in a row. Uh, talk to me about this just unprecedented growth in the market. Yeah, we're ticking off a lot of all-time records. You, know, you mentioned the Dow Jones, S&P 500 is getting close there. But it's also broad-based, too, if you look at the Russell 1000, large cap space, Russell 2000, small cap space. So you're seeing a very broadly diversified run in equities. So uh, the economy hasn't changed that much, but it is grinding uh, forward. There's a gradual improvement in the economy. So I think the biggest shift right now has been in sentiment. So investors are more confident, institutional retail, and they're willing to pay more for stocks or risk assets in this environment, certainly more than they have been over the last couple of years. So sentiment has changed. Assets are rotating from cash into equities. It could be that they're coming out of bonds. It's early days, but we'll see if that's a rotation there as well. Uh, but right now, sentiment is certainly in favor of stocks. But the fundamentals, while improving gradually, haven't improved a lot. Yeah, you're saying that sentiment is improving within the market, but is that really trickling down to Main Street? Are we seeing the confidence that we're seeing within the money markets actually, you know, trickling down to the folks that are on every day just trying to balance their checkbooks and do those types yeah, of things? Yeah, I think the data would suggest it is. I mean, not all, as robust as many would like it. Uh, unemployment, for example, is coming down very gradually in a very glacial way, and we see unemployment improving glacially, but it is improving. Uh, people are keeping uh, more money uh, until very recently with the tax hikes. Uh, uh, incomes are have somewhat stabilized and I think consumption is improved it's certainly not what it was five or six years ago so there I think there's a lot of indicators that the person on Main Street the consumer they're holding their own and in the face of a lot of political shenanigans in Washington DC and Europe which is the capital of political malfeasance in many ways what they've been doing over there for the last number of years uh, the, the private economy the consumer is kind of holding up reasonably well but that said is it's gonna take a long time to bounce back from the injury that was done to the economy in 2008-2009 you know, I, I was just thinking before we came on about, it feels like we've been here before. You know, when you look in the last decade, we've had two major market corrections that I think most people haven't forgotten. And they, mm -hmm. they've been waiting to get back even to where they were before. And for a lot of people, they're there now. And so the questions a lot of people are coming in and talking to us about is, is the market going higher? Is it going lower? And is that even the right question to be asking? It could be the right question in the longer term, but you and I, we've talked about this before, we've, we'll talk about it again, I'm sure. So, yeah. and so when, when Steve and I, when we talk about these portfolios, what we want clients to understand is it's that long-term goal setting that's important. Mm -hmm. So our perspective being an institutional uh, 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 advisor is to take that long-term goal-oriented a portfolio, that multi-asset portfolio, and say, what is the combination of assets, stocks, bonds, cash, commodities, emerging markets, international, listed infrastructure, kind of all the above, and creating almost like an institutional profile that increases the probability of getting from here to where you're going to be 10, 15, 20 years down uh, the road. But you, very good point. So for the average couple that retires in their early 60s, if that's their goal, you know, they probably have a two, two and a half, maybe three decade Hmm. lifespan in front of them. So I think for a lot of people, the volatility they see in the market, the uncertainty, but a big risk to that portfolio is going to be outliving their money. Hmm. Uh, so longevity risk or spending all of your money and then not having died when you've done that uh, is a very real risk. And as life uh, spans increase, as medical science gets better, that makes our job a little bit trickier because we need to uh, make those assets stretch for a longer period of time. So annual fluctuations, quarter to quarter fluctuations, I mean, they're certainly dramatic. They grab the headlines. Are they as important as that multi-asset profile? I'm not as convinced. You, you want to extend out your discipline, extend out that horizon. You know, for the most part, you seem really confident in this market mm -hmm. and in the growth that we've seen in the market. But are you seeing any problems that could trip us up? I know, you know, in 2000, 2007, there was the, the dot-com 
bubble burst mm -hmm. in 2000 and 2007, the spillover from all the subprime mortgages. Sure. Is there any troublesome signs that you see from here on out? Well, th the thing about black swan events is they're all but impossible to predict. So are, are there systemic risks out there? There certainly are. Uh, but what we saw in 2000 with the dot-com bubble is very distinct from what we saw in 2007. I'm glad you separated the two. Uh, the likelihood that we're going to get another 2007, I think, is decreasing as we put more days between today and, and 2007. I think the Federal Reserve has done a reasonably good job, uh, and I think Bernanke is going to be lauded by history for having been the right person with the appropriate tools at the right time. Uh, so given where we were in 2008, what could have happened, deflation, a depression potentially, I think we've uh, made a remarkable recovery. Uh, I think for a lot of people, uh, they need to look at the long-term time horizon. If they were in a properly diversified multi-asset portfolio over this alleged lost decade, but if they are let's say, 60% stocks, 40% bonds, you know, the portfolios that we managed, you know, they had a very respectable rate of return over the last decade. It wasn't lost, but if you're buying high and selling low, buying high and selling low, then it was a lost decade. Uh, so I think there's many ways to look at it, but the likelihood that we're going to get a, another event sometime soon, uh, I, I think is certainly greater than zero, but I don't think it's going to be a revisit to 2008. That said, Washington, D.C., uh, what we're seeing coming out of Europe, politicians are working overtime to make mistakes. Uh, they're, they're working overtime to create challenges, and they're being very successful in their efforts, by the way. But the market seems to be looking through that. It seems to be pricing in the volatility coming out of Washington, the games that are getting played, mm -hmm. and understanding that longer term, those are probably going to even out. If Washington can make a credible commitment to long-term fiscal discipline, the markets are going to like that a lot. They really are. And this is the first time in the United States history that we've ever made an attempt to try to balance the budget. Mm. So you, I would expect some shaky first steps on this process, but at least we're asking a really good question. And, and to the extent that we get the answer kind of right, the markets will like that. You know, I, I laughed David, when he was talking about politics, because we've talked a lot about this in the last six months, going, David and I talking about the coming to the elections, the uncertainty, both parties having very different views on how to, to do things. Um, we've had a low GDP number for the last mm -hmm. fourth quarter. Some people say that a lot of that had to do with the uncertainty, the election, uh, the politics. Are you seeing for the next year GDP being zero, one, two, where do you think it falls in? I think real GDP, so GDP not including inflation, will be right around 2%. Maybe a bit over, maybe a bit under, right around uh, 2%, so not a lot different than it was last year. Last quarter's GDP came in essentially flat, plus 0.1. Uh, before that, the, the previous quarter was 3.1%, uh, so you average it out, you're getting high 1%. So if you take the longer term numbers, uh, you're seeing a reasonably consistent high 1%, percent, low 2 percent. I don't think that's going to change a lot. Now the upside of that is we don't see that it's going to be a double dip recession in the U.S. That's not our forecast. Mm -hmm. We just see what we're calling a square root shaped economic recovery. Most baby boomers are used to a V-shaped recovery where you know, slightly less than two years they recover the entrance point. Uh, we don't think that's going to happen. We think it's just going to be kind of a grinding, obstinate, yet measurably positive recovery. And the academic research shows it takes about, about a decade to work your way through you know, these kind of balance sheet recessions. And we're probably halfway through, maybe a little bit more, uh, through a, a, a decade-long recovery process. Mm -hmm. Again, not a double-dip recession, certainly not a depression, uh, but it's going to be a lot of work. The yards are available, but they're going to be hard yards. Let's talk about some of the people that are invested in this market. Right. Of course, folks who have their pensions in the market is uh, the mainstay for our audience. Uh, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, I know that a lot of folks have just been too wary to get involved in this market. If you've been sitting on the sidelines, are you too late to the party in this market's uh, rally higher? Or uh, is there some advice you can give to folks that now are saying, okay, we've been in cash, we've, you know, we, we haven't been invested in the market, this is what they should do? Well, first off, what I'm going to say is they need to work with a good quality financial advisor because they've got to customize these portfolios and that's what, you know, your specialty. And why we, at Russell, we work with a small number of, of great partners to customize that portfolio. It really depends on what they want to do. I mean, your portfolio has to be customized. In, uh, for, so for someone that I've never met, I don't have information. It's that personal relationship to customize. Are you retired? Did you just buy a business? Did you get, just get a divorce? Are your kids going to college? Those factors are going to be very critical determinants of what kind of portfolio is appropriate. But if you look at a long-term investor that's got 7, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, the options are very limited. You've got government bonds, which are not attractive. And if you do some simple arithmetic, if you get a 10-year government bond, which is averaging 1.6%-ish for the last number of quarters, and if inflation is indeed 2.5, well, 2.5 is larger than 1.6. That's almost, almost a percent of guaranteed loss, a real loss locked in for a decade. 
Not too many financial plans are going to be successful based upon a guaranteed 1% annualized loss. Mm -hmm. So that means that the appropriate portfolio for a lot of investors is going to be longer term, what kind of globally diversified multi-asset strategy of these risk portfolios becomes important. Mm -hmm. uh, because they need to beat inflation, they need to hit their, their investment goals, so that means that they need to be very disciplined, very diversified, multi-asset approach, but they need to participate because Bernanke and company and soon the, the, the Europeans, they're strangling people out of safe haven uh, uh, investments, cash, bonds. So what people thought was safe, was risk free, is zero or negative, which means their opportunity set is risk assets. Uh, big portion of that's going to be equities, but not the only portion of that is going to be equities. You know, you were saying longer term, be invested in the market for longer term. What if you don't have longer term? And you were one of these folks that were really just pinched hard by, mm -hmm. uh, the, by the last, you know, the 2007 recession. Is there an option? I know that you said, talk to your financial advisor, yeah. but... Well, that's going to be my answer again. <laughs> talk to your financial <laughs> advisor, because not having met this, this person, it's, yeah. it's difficult to come up with a specific answer. But longevity, people are living into their 80s, into their 90s. Uh, I mean, look at what, you know, if you look at Medicare and longevity, in the 1970s, a hypertension became well understood, and high blood pressure medication became widely prescribed. What did that do to the health and the longevity of the average American? It went through the roof. So a lot of the actuarial assumptions just went right out the window. And the, the, the uh, financial advice community had to relearn how to take you know, 78, 80, 82, 85, and not 67, 68, 69 as a realistic longevity uh, mark. So for the person, they say that they don't have a long time horizon. They need to assess, in my opinion, whether or not that's an accurate assessment. Do they indeed have a short time horizon? Mm -hmm. My guess is for a lot of people in their 60s and 70s, their time horizon could well be longer than they're estimating right now. They want to get a good handle on that. All right, a lot of, a lot of, uh, of information for folks to take in. Yeah. Where do you see us from here on out? I know we've talked about the political climate. Uh, we've talked about this market that keeps on climbing. Is there, uh, you know, what does it look like for us? I, I think the equity markets are, they, they kind of look like a fully valued market. I don't know if it's an overvalued market. It all depends on how sentiment, corporate earnings, and the economy do. Uh, sentiment has changed a lot. So I don't think the market looks overly cheap right now. Uh, but if we do get some sentiment, we understand that it could kind of melt upward from here, but we think it's going to be very volatile. So maybe there's a slight upside U.S. equities from here. Not a lot, very volatile, because markets tend to be extremely volatile, probably more volatile than people uh, appreciate uh, getting into markets. But the market pays you to do one thing, to take a risk. The higher the rate of return that you're getting or that you need, the higher rate of risk you must assume. Uh, and people just need to understand that right now peace of mind is very, very expensive. Uh, and they, if they are of a mind where they're willing to overpay for peace of mind knowingly, I don't know that I can tell them that they're wrong. Uh, but our, in our assessment right now, people are probably overpaying for certain things. All right. Well, well, let's wrap it there. A lot of information. Uh, Dr. Stephen Wood, Chief Market Strategist for Russell Investments in North America. Thank you. For Stephen Carlton, I'm David Story. This has been A Look at Finance.